Hey, what's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we're going to rank the discography of the Smashing Pumpkins. Wanna go for a ride? And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, y'all, I got my flannel on because we're talking some 90s music. And also, I will not be doing song clips for this particular video because the odds of of this not getting claimed if I do that are pretty low. But you, you've heard these albums. Chances are, if you've clicked on this video, you've heard most of these albums. But let's start with the beginning with Gish. Their debut album around 1991. Great album. Uh, it took me a little while to get into this one because I kind of had to backtrack my way to it. I, like many people, I think got into sort of their a uh, little bit further down the line material that we'll just talk about. But yeah, as far as just like a really solid kind of like progressive rock album, this this is one of their best, I think. Uh, you got I Am One, you got Siva, which is endlessly fun to play and also play on like uh, it's on Rock Band or Guitar Hero. One of the two. I think it's on Rock Band. Uh, Rhinoceros, Bury Me, just lots of overall really fun songs. The guitar work is great, pretty dynamic songwriting, and pretty impressive for the band to just sort of kick off on this high of a note. I'm going to go ahead and put Gish at A tier, and then move right along to Siamese Dream. So this is the album that kind of made the Smashing Pumpkins a household name, which is pretty impressive considering it's only their second album. But man, what an album. Uh, so good. We got Cherub Rock, of course, kicking things off. Another really fun song to play. Quiet. Today, absolute classic. Like, I don't even need to play the clip for that one. You're already hearing it play in your head right now. Disarm, one of my personal favorite Smashing Pumpkins tracks. Geek USA, a little bit of a deeper cut, but another fun one. Still maintaining kind of some of the classic rock, or not classic rock, but progressive rock elements of Gish. But then kind of putting their own, more of their own signature on it with this one. Becoming more kind of what we know as the classic Smashing Pumpkins sound. And very consistent album. Fantastic. I will say that um, I was reminded going back through these of just how bloated, though, pretty much every Smashing Pumpkins album is. This is an hour and three minutes. And then we're about to get into some even longer ones. I didn't remember them being this long, but... It sort of makes sense to me because this is the era where CDs were starting to be on the rise. And it's like, oh, we've got all this extra space. We can fill it up with more music. And add to that the fact that Billy Corgan kind of has an ego. <laughs> like, there's no denying that for better or for worse. And so I think he has a really hard time sort of cutting down tracks and making things like brief he prefers to like if it's his idea it's good enough to be on the album is <laughs> kind of what it feels like but this one still manages to hold my attention pretty much all the way through which is pretty impressive but yeah Siamese Dream S tier for sure moving on to Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness the double album so speaking of long so 1995 uh, very long. So first disc is almost an hour. Second disc is over an hour. But I'll say, um, like I said with Nine Inch Nails, The Fragile, this is one of like a handful of double albums that I think were worth being double albums. I think most double albums are insanely bloated and are, are generally a misstep for a band. Like it's, it's not something you want to do unless you really have a fully formed concept. I can count maybe on one hand how many double albums out there I think are truly worthy of this. And Melancholy and The Infinite Sadness are definitely up there at the top. You've got Tonight Tonight. You've got Zero, like a little bit of everything. For the heavier stuff, you've got you know Zero, Bullet for Butterfly Wings. But if you want something from their more kind of matured, more uh, expansive, almost symphonic catalog, you've got Tonight Tonight. You've got Where Boys Fear to Tread. You've got Bodies, another super heavy track. 1979. Honestly, like my favorite song of all time, just period, not even for the Smashing Pumpkins, just in general. And then so many great deeper cuts, too. Like, again, this this album holds my attention all the way through, uh, aside from just the singles on it, too. So for that reason, easily, this also has to be S tier. Just an incredible album, such a legacy, and those tracks just still hold up and are some of the best to this day. So then how do you follow that up? Well, you, you go a completely different direction, really, in some ways. So then we had a 
Adore, which I've been for decades <laughs> calling Adore, um, and have had to fix that. So it's, it's kind of hard for me to do that. But yeah, it's just Adore. 1998, much more electronic album. And it was funny to me, too, when Seer came out last year, as of the time of recording this. Um, and everybody's like, whoa, Smashing Pumpkins, like electronic music. I'm like, dude, Adore, like they did that. This isn't completely new. Like they're definitely pushing it even further. But yeah, uh, Adore, though, really enjoy Adore. It's like a very dark, kind of almost like gothic album. But yeah, with a lot of electronic influence, especially on the title track, Ava Adore. Love that one. Just a classic um, apples and oranges, another one of my personal favorites. I kind of wish I could play that one because it has a really cool, just sort of dense melody to it, um, and a lot of atmosphere. But I also love Perfect. I like Daphne Descends. I like Pug, Annie Dog for just something more chill, just piano and Billy singing, beautiful track. Shame, really, really solid, really solid. A little too long, hour and fourteen minutes again, so a little bit bloated. But all things considered, like, I listen to it start to finish most of the time. It's one of my favorites to go back to, so I'm going to still go ahead and put that one at A tier. All right, then we move into the 2000s with Machina, The Machines of God. Pretty solid album, Everlasting Gaze, amazing track. Like, what a great riff to start the album off with. The, uh, just an amazing way to kick things off. And then that break where the guitars and the music cuts out and Billy's just, you know, the sentimental sway. You know, <laughs> you can't not sing along to that. Stand Inside Your Love, also another like later career, great single for them. The Imploding Voice, really fun. Another long album, though. Um, and I feel like this one's uh, not quite as tight overall as Adore, especially like the second half kind of loses me, even though I do like some tracks like Wound. But kind of like a lot of these like last four sort of drift off for me so it does lose some appeal for that but it's still like a legacy album i like listening to it a lot there aren't any like bad songs on it um but by like comparison and i'm gonna kind of put these sort of in order as well from right to left like i like to do so i'll put that a little bit behind a door and still still a tier just barely kind of an a minus b plus sort of territory and so, and then they dropped Machina 2, which was not really a traditional release. Like, it didn't have the, the vast release. I believe it was like a posthumous release, if I'm remembering correctly. But right on the heels of Machina. Um, decent album. Decent album. Feels like kind of a, a B-sides collection from Machina, which it kind of, sort of is. Um, we could probably argue about that. It's a little bit shorter, though. Um, but it's got some good ones on it. Glass theme kicks things off on a heavy note. Cash Car Stars like has a really great groove to it. Kind of a fun track. Dross is pretty solid. Home White Spider is is another standout on here. And yeah, it's it's actually surprisingly pretty solid but not quite as good as those other albums. I'm going to go ahead and put that one at B tier. Don't re-listen to it as much. Has a lot more kind of like B-side material on it, I would say, but still an enjoyable listen. All right, and then that concludes the albums that I own. Now, I originally did own this next one, Zeitgeist. Um, I actually had the big special edition, like, it was like a long, like, booklet-style version because I was such a Smashing Pumpkins fan and was excited to hear more from them. So this came out in 2007, and uh, I really liked it when it first came out, but the more I listened to it, the, the less I liked it and the more I think it sank in that like this is never going to be the Smashing Pumpkins of old. Um, but it's got some fun tracks on it. Tarantula, That's the Way, My Love Is, Doomsday Clock, and a couple of decent uh, deeper cuts on it too. But overall, just, just doesn't stack up. I'm going to put that one at C tier. All right, then we have Oceania at 2012. So this is one that uh, after Zeitgeist, I kind of dropped off of the Smashing Pumpkins and just kind of stopped listening, stopped caring. Because, again, I'd sort of made peace with the idea that, OK, they're never going to be the same band that I loved growing up. Um, but going back to this one, great album. Like of the reformation albums, this is easily the best one and the one I enjoyed re-listening to the most as I was going through these again. Um, first three tracks and in, in particular, incredible way to start off the album. And it's just such a melodic and stunning listen 
Um, still an hour. <laughs> Billy just can't help himself, man. He like can't. It's not possible for him to make an album that's less than an hour. It seems like, but he holds the time like really solid, almost a tier. I would say, even if it's just like not. I don't really listen to it as much, but given some time, I could see this creeping up. So this is at very least a very high B plus for Oceania and definitely better than Machina 2. Then we had Monuments to an Elegy in 2014. It's okay. It's, it's perfectly fine. Like it was a listenable album. It's got some decent moments on it with like being beige. One and all we are, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Um, oh, and, and I, I should censor myself from what I said last time, because you can't make an album under an hour. Well, look at that. Nice little brief 32 minutes, 35 seconds. So I give I give Billy credit on that. And I did notice when I was re-listening to this one that like, oh, it's kind of like to the point. So I give it credit for that, but not very memorable. Not a whole lot like that. There aren't any really tracks on there that I'd like throw into a playlist like there are with Oceania and even Zeitgeist, too. So I'm going to put that one at C tier, just probably a little bit behind Zeitgeist. All right, then we have Shiny and Oh So Bright Volume 1 LP, No Past, No Future, No Sun. That is a long title. This came out in 2018. And uh, yeah, another one, actually 30 minutes. I need to eat my words. I wasn't, wasn't paying attention enough. <laughs> but yeah, this album also kind of just okay. Uh, it has its moments. Silvery sometimes. Solara was kind of the big track on this one. But again, kind of same issue as I had with the last album. Not very memorable. Even the standout tracks aren't particularly like playlist worthy. So that one's also C tier. These, these two are pretty neck and neck. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that there. And that brings us to present day with Seer from 2020. Uh, back to... Long runtime. This is a 72 minute album. <laughs> Very long and does not need to be. Um, pretty disappointing because I really liked the singles leading up to this one. And even though it could have turned some people away with the kind of dance music quality of it. Again, I was like, oh, this is kind of like a door and I like a door. So let's let's see where we go. Um, we got one super heavy track with Witch, which is really fun. Then you've got the title track, which is super infectious and just damn catchy really fun stuff but unfortunately the the deeper cuts just do not live up like listening to this album i put up a full review of it if you want to check it out uh it's just so dull it's just painfully dull it's it's not like terrible it didn't make me like angry listening to it i was just like falling asleep it's it's just really boring in my opinion so if you ask me, this is actually their worst album so far. The difficult part is that it has better singles, I think, than either of the last two albums. It's just that the rest of it is, is not particularly good, and there's a lot more of it to go with. So that's D tier. And yeah, those are my rankings of the Smashing Pumpkins. Always fun to revisit these guys because they were definitely one of the earlier kind of heavy bands that I really got into and started collecting their albums and all of that. And obviously, you know, I'm a, a bigger fan of the 90s era stuff, but I, I'm always interested to see what they're doing. I think Billy is a very intriguing, strange guy. <laughs> always interesting seeing him doing interviews and things like that. I mean, and it was also interesting, too, just to look at, as I was re-listening to these, even my favorite albums, the imperfections in them, and, like, really letting them stand out. Again, like, almost all of the albums are overbloated, if you ask me. Like, even their best ones. And so if, if I had one big piece of advice for the Smashing Pumpkins, that would be it. Like, work on brevity. Work on being more concise. Like, your album doesn't need to fill the entire disc space. Just, <laughs> just make great songs and hone it down. But now let me know in the comments, what do you think? What are your favorite Smashing Pumpkins albums? What are your least favorite and why? How would you rank them? Where did I get it wrong? Where did I get it right? Let's have a conversation about it down there. Also stick around because I got plenty more videos coming right after this one. Not only more of these tier list videos, but also full album reviews for new releases, interviews with bands on the podcast, other band lists, you name it, we've got it. So plenty of reasons to stick around and subscribe if you have not already. Also chat with us on Discord and support me on Patreon. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.